Good morning, folks. Please pardon the loud rain in the background. You'll note a filament release simultaneous with an eruption behind the limb, an M2 solar flare. Then, a few hours later, an M6 erupted as the sunspot group crested onto the Earth-facing disk. Folks, we've got another sunspot to watch. Those two solar flares occurred yesterday, starting right after the news uploaded to YouTube, and including this morning's latest blast, another M2. That makes three M-class solar flares in less than 24 hours from this grouping. At the end of the video, we'll close with close-ups of this eruption, but for now just know that these ones are not Earth-directed, but that the sunspots will be turning into face Earth over the next couple days. Looking at the coronal field shows a wide opening to let major negative extensions of the southern polar coronal hole come in. That goes way north and can be seen in 211 angstroms as the dark patch is turning in from the left side. Be an interesting period to watch for sure. Spot of good news as the high energy proton surge is finally waning here at Earth. Looking at the active regions, we focused first on the Earth facing sunspots. Not terribly large or terribly small, but definitively simple beta class magnetics to these sunspots. We need another 12 to 24 hours for proper diagnosis at the limb group popping those flares. Solar wind telemetry shows a high variability to the plasma density despite a nearly constant speed. This perturbation didn't produce a ton of instability yet, but the sensitive meters are showing the effect on our system, along with the plasma penetration of the magnetosphere refusing to go away yet again. Quick look at the planets as we're now coming out of the Mars, Sun, Mercury, Jupiter lineup. Looking ahead to when those coronal holes will face Earth reveals the geocentric conjunction of Venus and Saturn. And looking a bit further ahead, Mercury will heliocentrically conjoin Saturn and then swing around to geocentrically conjoin the Sun about eight days later. That's how we start December. Amazing new photo out of Rhea transiting Titan. There's no story here, just showing what kind of pictures they are capable of getting and hoping you remember how pitiful the images of sighting spring were when it passed Mars. I guess they sent all their good cameras to Kronos for Saturnalia last year. All joking aside, however, compared with Siding Springs' close approach, this is Van Gogh versus Etch-a-Sketch. Not to beat a dead horse, but I do not believe we got the real photos of that event. We should all be a little upset about it. Moving on, happy thoughts. We've got a terrific link for you from the ESA with a couple animations of long-term soil, ocean salinity, and other planetary characteristics and how they've changed the last few years. NASA's Earth Observatory is comparing before and after shots of the record snowfall that just hit the Smoky Mountains. We're monitoring Nuri as it creeps north, slated to miss Japan, and hopefully that's accurate. Vance in the East Pacific has peaked in power, should weaken while heading for the Mexican coastline, but it is also tossing its moisture due north to outduel the Pacific moisture flow onto the northwest. Each has a great convergence to work with, pushing the air along. And nobody should be surprised at tonight's watch zones sticking to those convergences. Be still my beating heart, things change in Europe. The low broke east and expanded out to cover most of the eastern half of this area with about four or five separate low nodes where the air curls back for convergence. Watch zone tonight? <laughs> Lots. In the southwest Pacific, you see one system weakened and leaving New Zealand while a strong moisture flow breaks into Australia, all the way north to the previous convergence. No major warnings right now, but some isolated alerts are possible. Let's watch those eruptions pop. Shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.05 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.